So this video is all about what goes into making a caravan an off-road caravan designed for tough terrain and remote area operations. And I'm going to be using a Bruder EXP6 as a demonstration. It's not going to be a full review of the caravan, just to look at some of the more interesting technical features which go into making it suitable for off-road um, use and remote area ops. So we're going to start with suspension, and that's critically important to any caravan, but particularly an off-road caravan in the same way that suspension is absolutely critical to off-road vehicles. Now the first point I note is that there's air suspension, which is um, this spring here and that spring over there, and that gives variability, much the same way you find as air suspension on things like Land Rover Discoveries. Um, now, what I mean by that is that you can actually raise or lower the height of the vehicle and you can level it as well. So um, it's actually possible to raise a wheel completely off the ground. So you can change a tyre um, or you can lower the vehicle down a bit, maybe to get um, better hitch access or sneak it underneath a tree, or you can raise um, the van up. Um, uh, if you're in a, say, highly technical section, rock crawling or something like that, you just need an extra bit of um, departure or approach angle. Now this is a tandem axle trailer, so obviously there's um, four wheels in it, the front and the rear. Now there's two ways caravan suspension can be set up um, in terms of uh, a tandem. You can have load sharing and non-load sharing. So this is how load sharing suspension works conceptually. So here we've got a typical tandem axle suspension arrangement. I've just put the springs in here as core springs, could be air springs, doesn't matter. Left the dampers off for simplicity. Now, when uh, a wheel goes over a bump, naturally, a lot of the weight is taken on that uh, first wheel and naturally the spring compresses. Now, that other wheel at the back um, is pushed down, but it's only pushed down by the spring extending. There's no real force on it at all. Now, if we look at load sharing, here's, a con here's the concept of it. Imagine that we've got this beam here that's in a pivot point. We've got a spring here and here. Now, what that means is that when this wheel is forced up, this beam pivots on this red point here and forces the other wheel down and therefore the whole thing keeps both wheels much more in contact with the surface and also the pivot point is always going to be at this uh, stage over here whereas with um, the non-load sharing it kind of you're pivoting around this one and maybe that one and one in the middle so um, the stability isn't anywhere near as good. Now if we translate that to how that works with an air, air suspen uh, suspension system, so we've got our two springs here and here which are converted now to air springs, we've got a line in between the two, and when this one is uh, goes over a bump, this air spring compresses and it forces air into the other um, airbag which pushes that down in exactly the same as the pivot point on the previous slide. Whereas we can also lock off the air suspension so that when this one is compressed then it cannot force air in, into that, so this is your non-load sharing equivalent there. So there's pros and cons um, of both. For high speed stability, you tend to want um, non-load sharing suspension because then that way um, you get better high speed um, stability. For off-road use, you want load sharing ability because when you go up over different terrains, you want um, one wheel coming up like that to force the other one down and then you've got maximum contact patch with the tyres to, um, to the ground. So how have Bruder managed to get two into one? Well, the answer is the air suspension system. So we've got the two airbag springs here and here and they are connected by this um, pipe uh, over here and there's lock off valves here and here. Now if the, um, the valves are open as they are at the moment when this wheel goes up obviously that um, uh, spring compresses and it forces air out here into this one and it pushes that one down so in effect we've got the um, load share system going going on there now this is pretty much the same system which land rover use in the front of their air sprung vehicles like discoveries range rover sports etc now when we lock the valves off then 
when this spring compresses, it cannot actually, um, there's no air traveling across here, so it has no effect on the other one. So therefore we get the non-load sharing effect um, going on. So you can have the best of both worlds, um, which one you want for low speed or for high speed or for stability or whatever else. So there's a difference in stability in terms of pitch between load sharing and non-load sharing. Now, if we take the load sharing suspension, when um, the, the caravan pitches down, both wheels are still firmly on the ground, which is what you want for off-road. But if we take a look at the non-load sharing, it pitches down and that back wheel starts to not quite come off the ground, but there's less weight on it. That means that the caravan wants to return back to a level position like this. And the same deal here, when it pitches up, those wheels with the load share are firmly on the ground, whereas the wheels with the non-load share, that front wheel starts to get off the ground a little bit and therefore it wants to return back to its normal um, horizontal state. So in any form of vehicle, on-road or off-road, it's really important that the tyre um, is flat to the surface area that you're travelling over, so it goes up and down like that as opposed to angles that goes up in angles or goes the other way in angles or whatever else. And if that um, isn't done, then you're not going to get the optimal contact patch of tyre to the ground and that's going to um, reduce performance. So what you need then is a suspension geometry which allows that um, tyre to remain flat to the ground um, and there's a couple of ways Bruder have done that. So we've got this arm here which um, allows the wheel to just move straight up and down but then we've also got the um, spring here, the air, air spring as well as the shock and they also need to be operating as um, over a great radius as possible and that's why they this um, spring is mounted on a separate pivot point over there so it can remain nice and, and vertical and um, there's a fair bit of travel in it. So to explain the chassis concept using diagrams, this is what the average cav caravan chassis looks like. It's completely flat, whereas what Bruder have done is followed what the automotive industry typically does and have this sort of kink here and that allows the shock absorber um, to be mounted quite vertically as opposed to this one which is mounted at an angle and it also means there's a bit more room for the spring and the shock to extend as you can see. Now if I um, redraw the diagram move the wheel down a little bit and the same here um, what we can see is that the shock absorber has only moved a small amount um, from here to here whereas when it's positioned vertically it's a greater range of movement as uh, you can see with the band on there. Now what that means is that when a shock absorber is moving up and down just like that just, just a tiny bit then it can't effectively move the valve through the tube and then properly down. Where if it's moving over a longer range as it is here then the shock absorber can more effectively do the damping job it's designed to do. Now these are also remote reservoir shocks and Bruder tell me that the distance between, so basically we've got a monotube in here um, and that will have a piston pushes up there and then as it moves up the oil moves into this canister here and back down again um, and that just gives extra surface area for cooling and Bruder say that in hot conditions they actually had to increase the distance from the remote canister here to here so they've actually increased that just for extra surface area. And I asked why did I have two shocks as opposed to one and said well we could go for, for, um, for uh, one shot but we've gone for two um, just because we could and because um, that we feel that gives us more surface area and cooling there and this suspension is their, is their own monotube, monotube design it's, it's not one they've got from anywhere else. Okay so demonstrate the air suspension now and that's controlled off this uh, control panel here so Garmin navigation it's also the reversing camera etc as you can see it's battery powered it just clips in so we can um, we can play around with that so what we're going to do is I'm um, set it to the um, fairly low ride height at the moment and then if I go up here and up here then you can see that the compressor starts up and up it goes so we'll take it up to the maximum Once you get to your campsite, you obviously want it level, so then you can just press auto level there, and should auto level, there we go. 
so then it will just go, okay, how level can I get it? You'd need to adjust the jockey wheel as well, but um, it would still work pretty nicely for you. Okay, so the van's at a fairly low ride height at the moment, because the air suspension's lowered a bit. And uh, as you can see, I can't have scales, but I can't really lift that drawbar at all. So I'm just going to take the control panel unit here. And what we're going to do is we are going to we're going to raise the left and the right side. I've locked off the rear. So I'm going to press the, that to raise the left and that to raise the right. You can see there. There's two, so just press those two. And up it comes. The tyres have equal pressure but watch the contact patch on the front one increase and the rear one decrease as the weight is shifted from rear to front. Now you can see here that airbag is fully inflated and this one looks pretty pretty miserable because there's basically no air in it. Um, so that's the, the difference there. You can also have a look at the Look at that, the tyres were pretty much the same pressure so the contact patch on that is much greater because there's all the weight on it whereas on the rear tyre, um, there's virtually no weight on, on there. Not suggesting you necessarily want to run that, but you know it is good to have the flexibility to um, shift your weight forwards or, or shift the pivot point forwards or backwards. Okay, that's about done now. So you can see that I can even just do it one-handed because I have changed the tow ball mass um, simply by shifting the pivot point from about here to pretty much over the axle. So there's not a lot of weight on this tyre um, at the moment, but there's still enough to provide some stability and then that gives you a variation in um, tow hitch height as well as um, tow hitch weight and stability. So that just the flexibility of the air suspension. So how's that trick with the tow ball mass working? Well. We've got load sharing suspension in at the moment, and that's so we've got the center of gravity, which is arbitrarily about there. And our pivot point in the load sharing system is halfway between the two wheels. And therefore, then we've got this distance between that pivot point and the center of gravity, and that will then give us a certain amount of tow wall mass at the front. Then what we do, um, we massively front bias um, the uh, pivot point so in other words we're basically just shifting this pivot point from the center to the front and in that distance from pivot point to the center of gravity is less so we've got a smaller center of gravity a uh, sort of total mass at the front or we could do it the other way around we could almost in effect lift this wheel completely off the air, move the pivot point back here, then this arrow would be much larger and we get a much greater total mass. So you can play around with things in that way um, depending on what your needs are. Now, if you're off-road, um, that can be a real bonus as well. Let's say you need to pivot the vehicle around on two wheels only, then you've pretty much got these wheels more or less in the air, not creating a lot of drag. So then in an off-road situation, you could pivot around the front wheels easily, whereas if you didn't have that capability, trying to do a 180 turn um, with these wheels dragging would be very, very difficult. So whilst this is a tandem trailer, um, you are somewhat negating one of the disadvantages of that um, tandem trailer design by the ability to turn more tightly should you need to do it. Now of course you're not necessarily going to go to all that trouble every single time you want to make a turn off-road but there will be situations where you do want it and it's nice to have that flexibility. A lot of the weight is over the front axle at the moment and that's fine because the tyre and the wheel and the axle and everything else is all rated to take the entire weight of the vehicle. It doesn't actually need that second um, axle at the back so it could even drive along and just completely remove that and it would be legal um, um, and properly load rated. Okay now these are airbag systems so the question comes what if they completely fail because springs do fail even coil springs will completely snap off road leaf springs can snap as well so what happens in that case well there's actually a bump stop inside these airbags and um, so let's say that all four airbags failed then the vehicle would simply ride on its bump stops um, and that's basically a large piece of rubber. You 
wouldn't get much suspension out of it, but um, the wheels would continue to turn. There would be clearance between the top of the wheel and the, um, and the, and the body there, um, and you could still drag the trailer. And with 33 inch tyres, you'd, you'd even have a still um, pretty decent clearance. So you could have a comp you could slash, I'm not going to do it because it'd get upset with me, you, but you could slash all of these four air springs and still um, drag the trailer, and people have actually done that um, on, on tests. Now, in soft conditions, having a tandem um, wheel, four wheels, is a bonus and also a drawback. Um, it's a bonus when you're going in a straight line because you get extra flotation and the tyres match exactly the track um, of each other. But when you start to turn, then there is extra drag from a tandem um, wheel situation, which is a problem um, in soft conditions such as sand. So you might need a bit of extra momentum there to, to handle that. However, the load share suspension does ensure that you get that maximum um, sort of flotation from both sets of wheels as opposed to one wheel going over a bit of a bump and then all of the weight is on this one and that goes over the bump all the weights on that one which not only destabilizes the van but it also means you're not getting the full flotation effect out of those four tires now on a hard surface like this one on bitumen um, that's not really a problem because the bumps are very minor but off-road you could have a bump this high or of rut or whatever else and so you really need that load share to sort of have the um, the two wheels doing that always in contact with the ground. If you did need to change a tyre on a vehicle, the way you do that is you drop it all the way down across um, all four wheels. Then you would strap this um, tyre, so basically when it, the vehicle raises up, the suspension doesn't drop down. So you put a strap across here and um, down at the trailing arm, arm there, and then raise it up, and then that would actually lift that particular wheel off the ground. I'm not going to do that now, but that's, that's how you do it. You can fit a variety of tyres and rims to this, and um, what's important for off-roaders, ideally you want to have exactly the same tyres and wheels on the trailer as on the tow car. And the reason for that, if you get a puncture on one and the other, it just gives you um, more options. Um, so Bruda, because they custom build, they can do that. They can change the offset, they can also change the um, rim, and they can change the tyre. And typically on these um, caravans, you go from 33 inch diameter tyres to 37 inch diameter tyres. Now, um, obviously, there's a weight penalty associated with the taller tyres, um, but you know if you, you can do it if you want to, and also there might be um, legality concerns, particularly in Europe as well. But they will match that, and that means that the the track um, th that these tyres run in can be made to be exactly the same as the, that of the tow car, which massively reduces your rolling resistance in soft ground or compression terrains like um, mud and sand, and therefore um, just makes it and easier tow. So this is the benefit of matching track. Now track is the distance between the center of two wheels and an axle, so here and here. In the case of the average vehicle, the front and the rear track is almost exactly the same by a few millimeters. So when the vehicle drives, it creates two sets um, of wheel rubs. Now, if we add the average large caravan onto that, that's typically wider than the tow car. And it also has a track which is wider as well. So we end up with four sets of ruts, um, not two. And that's terrible for compression terrains like mud and sand because you're more likely to get bogged and certainly use more fuel in the process. Now, if we take a narrower caravan, so we're going to take that same tow car again, and you can see this one is the same width as the tow car, and it's also got the same track, and we've still only got two sets of ruts, provided everything is going um, exactly in a straight line. So the advantage of this layout is clearly living space, because it's nicer to have a wider living space, it's just a bit easier, whereas the narrower one doesn't have as much living space, but it's less rolling resistance because on compression terrains, um, there's less drag because it's not wider than the tow car, it's the same width, and it's certainly better maneuverability when you're trying to get it through trees and obstacles and so forth. So pros and cons, you can take your pick. So this is a pretty standard heavy duty arc off-road jockey wheel, but um, if we look at this, this is a pin here, and that can be removed so that the entire jockey wheel assembly comes out so it doesn't hang down or get in the way when you're driving off-road. Now the brakes are discs all round, so they need a hydraulic actuator. They are a little bit slower to come into operation than um, the standard drum brakes, which you typically find on caravans such as these, but they do provide better stopping power and better heat dissipation, which is why they're used in this instance. Now this is a cool bit of design. You can see that at the front here, this part of the drawbar is actually disconnectable by these um, four bolts. So 
the last bit of the triangle can actually be taken off and then swapped out for different markets or different purposes, etc. Now something I do like about the front of the vehicle is that you can actually turn really, really tightly and almost deliberately, well, can deliberately jackknife it and um, get the tow car more than 90 degrees to the travel direction of the trailer, which is really handy when you're off-road. And here's another space to put the remote control system. So this is what you'd stick to your windscreen and um, then the remote control would mount to that and then so you could operate the caravan as you move with the air suspension, even the lights and everything else, but also particularly then get a rear view camera as well because we have a safety dive unit right there and that's your rear view camera. And by the way, that's also got lights so we can do inside light, outside light, roof, um, outdoor, indoor, turn all your lights off and courtesy light, etc. This is how you raise and lower the roof, like so. It's all electric and it's been designed to be able to raise the roof even with a really heavy snow load. Now this is with the roof fully down um, and I'm actually six feet tall so I'm just about able to um, stand up like it's not particularly uncomfortable I can certainly um, sit down okay so you kind of don't need to go raising the roof not crabbing around like that underneath it so that's good it's also a soft roof as well so if you do bang your head a bit then um, it's not really going to hurt you and I like this LED strip lighting here uh, low energy and also gives a nice even illumination all the way through as opposed to having a light here and a light there and you tend to run out of lights in inconvenient places okay so the roof is now raised and you can see there's a fair bit of difference between my six feet and the roof and that's you know, padded. Uh, now it's raised we can open up this vent so that gives you a decent bit of ventilation in hot conditions obviously hot air rising will help escape out of there pretty easily but again even when the roof is down um, I'm not overly compromised needing to sort of hunch around like that to move around inside the caravan. Now one problem I found of off-road caravans is you go for a corrugated drive and the cushions have gone through a bit of a journey um, and that's not a problem with the roof is because this just lifts up like that so it's not going to go anywhere which is great but then we can this one's also securely locked down as well so again that's not going to bounce around anywhere so I kind of like that um, design because it means that when you get to the end of your journey you don't need to relocate the cushions. Now underneath the seats are the electrics, not going to show you those at the moment, but uh, it does get pretty hot um, and they, um, all of that is vented out to, air, to uh, this panel here, so that basically pops down and then um, it will vent out through that way so you've got good electrical um, cooling there which is obviously critical for good operation. Now something else I like is the cooking area which is obviously accessible from outside here and here's your sink so you're going, hang on, um, where's your burners, Where, where's, where's the heat? Well, it's in here so we pull this drawer out, there we have our electrical hot pan there and then obviously that can be plugged in anywhere you like so um, the advantage of the electrical is that you just don't need to worry about gas which is a compliance um, safety nightmare so it's just gone you just use electricity and if you want to you can just plug this in anywhere you like it doesn't need to be anywhere near the vehicle obviously so then you can um, cook from inside or you can cook from the outside here or just take it wherever you want so I actually, I actually really like this idea you could actually obviously take that and put it on a table there as well so um, yeah I wish I had that instead of the gas in my van and here's more storage which is accessible in and outside of the vehicle depending on which way you want to cook now for the same reasons I'm quite a big fan of the way this uh, opens out because again you've got some form of cover here from the elements. Okay so this forward compartment slides out and then you've got storage boxes there which are 
soft close as you can see, so that just latches away. Um, massive great fridge here in this case, it's an angle chest freezer. And uh, then on you know, the side here, a little bit more storage for whatever you feel like. And then it pushes away like that. And we've got these double latches here and here, just to make absolutely certain it's not gonna come out. Okay, so to open up the back, we just go over here, release that over center latch. Same the other side, then, whoops, quite released. That comes up, and that can stay about there if you want it to, or it can go all the way up. Then this tail comes down like that, and then we can get inside. Now we can also pull this down for a bit of privacy to about here if we want to, and the door can still, open or it can go all the way up. So I quite like this because then you've got an area there which is you know, protecting you a bit from sun and shade, uh, sun and hail, rain or whatever the case may be, and they can hop inside. Now, um, you might think, okay, this is a bit of a step up, um, but of course we can fix that. Okay, so here's the app. So we're just going to, uh, we're just going to lower the whole thing. Um, so we just press down and down here, like that. Okay, and now I've got a nice easy step in like that. So if you are someone who's sort of a bit mobility impaired or can't manage the steps, then again, the air suspension comes into its own. It can level the van. It can also provide um, just a really nice easy step for you. So it's not too hard to get um, in and out. So another advantage of air suspension. So at the back, there's recovery points. Now these are right on the chassis rails and they're rated to five tons each. So there's one there, one there. So you could use a bridle door. So relatively close together which I quite like um, but far enough apart so if you wanted to pull from side to side you could do. Now there's a small winch over here um, and uh, that's not a massive one but they wanted to keep it fairly small so you get this nice very flat underbody tucked up inside there and I tend to agree with that because you're not probably going to want to do a massive pull backwards you can always put you know two snatch rings um, on that to create a mechanical advantage. Now if you're not sure what mechanical advantage is or how to rig for advantage I do have other um, videos on that I can show you how to get a two to one, three to one, or four to one advantage. Um, so, you know, you can get as much pulling power as you need out of it, but I do like the flexibility um, of having a small winch on the back. Okay, now underneath the chassis, and it's actually a completely separate chassis to the body. So here's the body, um, and here's the chassis, and there's the mount point. So that's exactly like a separate chassis design, like the Range or the Hilux or U or something like, like that. And this here is just a bit of foam. And what that does, that sort of insulates the body movement from the chassis movement, and allows a little bit of shock absorbing damping across here. So the chassis is actually completely strong enough to take all of the loads, um, and it doesn't rely on the body itself for any torsional stability or load carrying. It just sits completely on top and um, there's a few of these mount points around. Most of them are um, tucked away, but this one's exposed. Now, the other interesting thing is that um, the chassis is completely sealed. So if you look inside there, there's no holes, so no water can get inside the chassis. And um, then that means um, also that with all the holes around here, there's a spare one here and there's more you can see up the front here. Um, Oh, there's one here as, here as well. Uh, then you can run cabling or pipes, whatever, through it as has been done. And something else I quite like is that the edges are beveled. Now, obviously, you're still going to use a uh, sheath to go around it just for protection there. But um, if that was if that was sharp, then that could actually cut through the sheath. So another little um, point which I quite like about the Buddha design. So in the front storage compartment, there's a diesel heater, which is pretty standard. I kind of like the fact that the tank here is inside, so no one can easily steal the diesel inside, given how expensive diesel is these days. Um, this is actually a water pump, um, and there's a purifier. Uh, so what that means is you can be parked next to a river and take on board water and um, have it purified to refill your tanks um, that way, which I think is a pretty cool feature you don't often see. 
So I stuffed up the audio, which is why I'm doing this as a voiceover. What I'm showing here is that at the back you've got this angled curve area here, and that's great for off-roading with a good departure angle. There's also an aerodynamic benefit as well, because I think the Prudit are about unique amongst Australian manufacturers in doing any form of aerodynamic testing. When air moves over the back of a caravan, what you want is a nice smooth uh, convergence of top and bottom airflow like that, not a slab side like that you see now, which creates a lot of drag. So it's good that that taper there actually reduces drag, which improves fuel efficiency. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.